Today, per capita recession hits. Hello again, I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst of Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The Australian economy grew 0.2% in seasonally adjusted chain volume terms in the December quarter 2018, according to figures released by the Australian Bureau of Statistics. But the heavy lifting was done by government, leading to a 2.3% annual result. In seasonally adjusted terms, however, we had two quarter falls in GDP per capita. So we are technically in a recession on a per capita basis. Or in other words, GDP adjusted for migration in real terms went backwards again. Actually, the December data provided no major surprises as both the headline GDP and the behaviour of consumers were broadly as anticipated. And this is also true on housing, investment and public demand. The trends data shows a fall in GDP, GDP per capita and in the savings ratio. So we can expect significant fiscal stimulus in the budget and more after the election. This is an economy running on just a few cylinders. And by the way, new home building activity fell by 3.6% during the final quarter of 2018, while home renovation activity declined by 3.1%. And despite the softening at the end of 2018, however, activity was still higher than at the same quarter a year ago. So let's look in more detail at what the ABS said. Australia's gross domestic product grew by 0.2% in the December quarter, following a 0.3% rise in the September quarter. And so the Australian economy grew at 2.3% through the year. Government final consumption expenditure rose 1.8% in the December quarter and remains strong through the year at 5.6%. National non-defence was 4.2% and was the main contributor to growth in the quarter due to increases in social benefits to households from continued government spending on disability, health and aged care services. State and local government expenditure increased 1.1%, driven by rises in non-employee expenses. And general government gross fixed capital formation increased 2.7% this quarter. And the rise was driven by state and local general government at 6.3% with continued strength due to public infrastructure investment. This was offset by national general government, which fell 5.7% following defence purchases in the September quarter. And through the year, general government gross fixed capital formation has risen 9%, again reflecting the high number of public infrastructure projects occurring across the country. Turning to inventories held by business, they increased $685 million in the December quarter 2018. And the household final consumption expenditure increased 0.4% in the December quarter, with the through the year growth moderating to 2%. And the growth in household consumption was driven by spending on health, clothing and footwear, plus hotels, cafes and restaurants. There were falls in household spending for electricity, gas and other fuel, purchases of vehicles and furnishings and household equipment. And the compensation of employees increased 0.9% in the December quarter due to strength from both public and private sectors. Through the year, this increased 4.3% and with growth above its five-year December average of 3.4%. But the household savings ratio rose to 2.5% in the December quarter. This slight pickup was due to modest growth in household disposable income, alongside lower growth in household spending. And the growth in gross disposable income was due to continued growth in compensation of employees, as well as an increase in insurance claims received by households. And the chief economist for the ABS said growth in the economy was subdued, reflecting soft household spending and a decline in dwelling investment. The approvals for dwelling construction indicate that the decline in dwelling investment will continue. 
Household spending grew by 0.4%, reflecting a continuation of modest spending in recent quarters. And investment in dwellings fell 3.4%. Falls in private investment dampened growth in the quarter. This was consistent with the decline in construction industry value added, falling 1.9%. And the services industry supporting construction activity detracted from growth, with professional, scientific and technical services industry value added declining for the first time in three years. And mining investment fell in the quarter as significant projects transitioned from the construction to the production phase. This is reflected in oil and gas production, which grew 7.7%. Public demand sustained growth in the quarter. Public investment remained at high levels, with state and local government growth of 6.3%, reflecting continued work on a number of large infrastructure projects. And government final consumption expenditure grew 1.8%, with ongoing expenditure in health, aged care and disability services. This investment translates to ongoing strength from the healthcare industry, which remains the largest contributor to economic growth. As the economy transitions out of the mining boom, investment has remained strong with major public works driving growth around Australia. And that's the point. The weaker household sector is being supported by large infrastructure programs across the country and significant investment in community and welfare. But this all suggests more weakness ahead and the prospect of larger fiscal stimulus either side of the election is now all but certain as a result. Expect debt, therefore, to start rising again. And it's also worth reflecting that GDP is in any case a very poor measure of anything useful because it effectively measures activity, not outcomes. But GDP is still seen as the bee's knees when it comes to measuring an economy around the world, not just in Australia. So in a way, we are measuring and managing the wrong things. And just to reiterate once again, the data shows that on a per capita basis, for two quarters now, consumption has gone into reverse. And that does not read well ahead. If you like what you see here today, please like the post and add a comment or question. I'll read them all. And do share this via your social media channels. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please ring that bell to receive alerts for future posts. And if you have already subscribed, thanks. I really appreciate your support. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching. And I'll see you again next time.